Hello, everyone. Welcome to Craft Beer Bucket with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Craft Beer Bucket List. Before we dive in too far tonight, if you read before you clicked play, you would see that this is episode 100. Mike and Big Ray have broke off into triple digits. We're celebrating, and I don't know what better way to celebrate than by drinking beer and talking about beer and having fun and having a special guest and doing all of those things together. Beer, special guest, celebrating. But, oh, my God, I'm shutting up. Mike, bail me out, bro. I need you. <laughs> um, well, I'll say it's, it's uh, you know, we've had 99 episodes, so it's like 99 bottles of beer on the wall, right? And that was kind oh, of fun. Snap. Um, wow. No, it's been a lot of fun, man. We started this, uh, Heck yeah. this adventure a while back, and I've had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people. And uh, I, I, I'm with you. What a better way to celebrate it and cap it off than having a, an, another guest on here, some, somebody that – um, you know, I think it's pretty darn cool and, uh, sharing some beers and, you know, I'm with you. No, no better way to celebrate all that than having some really good beers. And there's some new beers on deck for all of us here. And yep. I'm excited about that too. But, uh, first let's, uh, tell us about our beer spot or our sticker sponsor. And then I'll talk about our beers. All right. So this week, our sticker sponsor is LaGrange Brewing out of LaGrange, Texas. If you're uh, not familiar, that's going to be about halfway between Austin and Houston, also in Texas. Imagine that. Uh, so thank you to LaGrange. We appreciate you guys giving us some stickers to hand out to our awesome listeners. As always, to be eligible for the stickers, you need to send us a DM on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter within seven days of the release date of this podcast. And uh, just say, I want some LaGrange in your message. We'll know what you're talking about. Now, be sure to send us that message quickly. The stickers do go out quite quickly. Yeah. So, again, you can hit us up on all of our social media outlets. And uh, thank you for, for hitting that. We, we love to get DMs and interaction uh, from everybody. So, even if you don't want stickers, thank you for reaching out. I appreciate that. Do we give them, like, bonus points if they have some ZZ Top lyrics in there? Sure. Well, we'll send out stickers and maybe, 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 do you have any like little gold star stickers too, Mike? Because that could be cool just to like give out. I, I think so we have like a little had. board to put a star by their name. But. I've got a, so I've got a, yeah, I've got a pile of random stickers. Yeah. So like if you, if you quote some ZZ Top lyrics, we'll give you like a bonus. Some bonus stickers. Why not? I'm feeling pretty, yeah. I'm feeling pretty, uh, you know, good tonight and having a lot of fun. So yay. Yeah. Anyway, I, yeah, we'll, we'll get seen, some stickers. We'll get some stickers. Stickers, 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 stickers. You know, like I have a sticker stash. I, I've probably got 150 or so just because I have a lot that haven't made it on my beer fridge yet. Uh, I'm really running out of room. I don't even know how many hundreds are on there. But your sticker stash dominates mine. Just like what you have even beyond the, the sponsor stuff. It's ridiculous, Mike. And uh, I think you had that started even long before we started the podcast three years ago. Yeah, so nobody um, can see it because we're on the podcast, but I've got an uh, old door that is my desk, and I covered one side of it with, with brewery stickers, and now I have flipped it over and have started the other side, and I have really no idea what I'm going to do when I'm done with it. Uh, maybe donate it to some college kids that need a beer pong table or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but all right, so let's talk about the beers. Uh so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give like a preview here, is we've got a special guest, and uh, so we're gonna kind of give a preview. Then we're gonna dive right in and welcome and kind of quiz her real quick. Um, but I want to talk about the beers. So we're gonna have two rounds of beers. There's a lot of beer coming at y'all. We've got two rounds. So round one, Ray's gonna have the Wild Leap Alpha Abstraction Double IPA. I'm gonna have the Lost Forty Native IPA, and our special guest Sydney is gonna have the Marshall. Tulsa 16 oatmeal IPA uh, after the namesake USS Tulsa, uh, I believe is what she had mentioned. And then for round two, you're going to have the adroit theory, chasing visions of our future. I'm going to have new province, life is a luxury. Uh, and then Sydney's going to be having the holiday big Henry Hazy. Uh, I think that's a pretty solid lineup, sir. 
That right? is a solid lineup. Dude, this will be our 100th solid lineup, Mike. <laughs> I don't even know. We, I haven't counted in a while. I looked at the spreadsheets, but we, with everything, I bet we're at like 400 beers now. Oh, hell. I don't with know. With these six. Like, so we've had several episodes with like eight or 10 plus beers, you know, visiting breweries and then giving us multiple flights. Right. And then buying more flights and talking about those. Yeah. And we it's like, thank God we got an Uber back to the hotel from the brewery because lots of flights. <laughs> we talked about all of them. Yeah. Um, so either way, it doesn't matter. We're up there, dude. And I just think it's awesome. Um, so it's I not think- about the quantity, but. It's right. uh, the quality that comes along with that big number. Sure. I think we should take this moment to tell everybody that please drink responsibly, never drink and drive. Always call a friend, an Uber or a taxi. Make it home safely. Do not get behind the wheel. Absolutely right. Responsible Mike is being responsible. You're such a dad, Mike. I know, I know that. Yeah. I'm an, I've been, I, t- <laughs> it's dude, not I told thing. somebody the other day, I've been a 70 year old man all my life. Like it's true. Like you know this. Yeah, uh, it is. You've always so, been kind of cr- even even in our teens, you were kind of crotchety. Um, <laughs> I love you too. Uh, oh my lord! <laughs> How about you introduce our special guest? Good grief! So, uh, so I would love to do that. So, sitting uh, in the green room, if you will, uh, we have a, a special guest, and this one's pretty cool. Uh, she is local to to my part of the the world um, here in Northeast Oklahoma. So you can find her on Instagram at Can Stop. Will Hop, yeah, but we'll call her Sydney for the podcast. So, Sydney, welcome to the show. Thank you for hanging out with Mike and I tonight. Hi, yeah, it's been been awesome. I'm so glad to be here and celebrating y'all's 100th episode. That's awesome, and congrats to you guys. I feel honored to be here. Oh, the pleasure is ours. I promise. And so, yeah, we're always <laughs> happy when somebody takes a uh, or carves out the time to hang out with this and talk about beer. Hey, Ray. No problem. I love doing that. Sydney's a Dallas Cowboys fan, by the way. Uh, you know, I read about that, and uh, that's kind of awesome since uh, you and I are both also Dallas Cowboys fans. Sydney, who's your favorite I'm Dallas a- player? Ugh. I mean, I have to go with Jason Witten on that one. I really oh, do. Oh, great choice. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's approved. <laughs> yeah, great choice. I, I mean, I don't he's, know. I'm a, he's a good one. He he earned he earned a ring in my mind. Right. One of one of the better tight ends that there was. He had to go to the Raiders Agreed. for a year, but we'll for, we'll forgive him. We'll forgive him. I, he's a uh, Cowboys fan at heart. Right. Always cowboy. Ray, what about you? Well, who's your favorite cowboy? Uh, you know, it's it's hard, Mike, because when when you love all of them equally because they wear the star, um, but it's. Is this, is this like a current Dallas player? My favorite Dallas player. Like you're, you're making it too hard. Just pick a player that's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite because so like Emmett Smith has always had a place in my heart, right? Like I mm-hmm. grew up. I, I was just old enough to start to understand football back in the '90s when when he was, you know, in his prime. And you know, he's just a dude that I never forgot, even his career and things he's done afterwards. He was just always been like uh, that solid guy to look up to, you know? So I'll tell you something uh, else. Been my favorite Dallas player. As he's gotten older, like I saw, I don't know where I saw him, but he had a, like a, a goatee and it was, it was gray. And, and so, he, you know, he's a black guy and like that gray goatee, it looks so effing cool. I, I love it. Yeah. I think, he, I think he's just, I mean, beyond being a great player, I think he, he's pretty fly looking. He's a pretty good looking dude. Oh, he's a good looking man, dude, man. No, for real. Here, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I, so, I just think it's, it has a very distinguished look about it, and I'm so jealous. So, all right. So, mine's Tony Romo. <laughs> oh, I love Tony That's, Romo. I, he's my I was between the two. Yeah. Tony I, Romo. I have to show you guys something. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, what? I oh, got man. the old Jason Witten signature. There you go. That's awesome. I b- behind my my closet behind me here. I've got some uh, my baseball or my football card collections in there somewhere, and I've got some autograph cards that I will never leave or I never part with. All right, so Sydney, tell us how. So tell us how how you got into beer. I'm, we're getting off track, but we need to talk about beer. <laughs> I could talk about the Cowboys all night, but a beer beer is definitely, especially craft beer, is another thing I could talk about all night. So let's let's swap over. Um. 
the the story about how I got into beer, I'll keep it short and sweet. I had a freshly graduated college. I was 21 and I started working for a local news agency in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I worked for Channel 8, ABC News, and I was doing small business advertising and went to go meet up with a client, um, Pearl Brewery Tours. Um, and he had just, Tyler Palmer is the name of the owner, who's now actually one of my very good friends because of this interaction, um, who also brews at, at Broken Air Brewing Company. So soup staying in the, in the, the beer scene for sure. But we went up to meet, meet up with this client and we met up at American Solera's old Sobo location in Tulsa, um, that's now closed, but they have their larger new tap room now. And everybody at the table ordered a beer. They're one of their double IPAs called Terpy Citra. At the time, I was 21. I didn't know much about craft beer. Didn't know much about beer at all. And I Terpy Citra sounded like Big Henry. I had no idea what that meant, what kind of beer it was. And they ordered it. And I said, Well, I don't know, you know, if I'd like that one. And they said, Just bring around for everybody. Just, just bring one. And I was like, uh, Okay. So I tried it, and I was like. Oh, oh, this is really good. I said, what is it? And they said, it's a double IPA. And I was like, yeah, there's no way. I, I don't think I like IPAs. And they were like, well, if you like that, you do now. And so ever since then, it kind of changed my opinion on craft beer because I drank it not knowing what it was, like going into it kind of blind and then realized I liked IPAs without knowing ahead of time that I was trying one. So I've been an IPA fan ever since and never turned back. And that's still pretty much all I drink. So speaking of IPAs, yeah. I think we should uh, open ours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm on board with that. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was a big miss by Mike. Um, so, Sydney, do you want to open yours first? We, we, we try to make the biggest and best sound with it. Okay. Hold on, I'll hold it right up. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Is that pretty, okay? <laughs> pretty, pretty crisp. It sounded pretty good. All right. Oh, look! Look at that! Everything of the Cowboys. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. These don't really work for it, so. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. And a quick reminder: uh, Sydney's drinking Marshall Brewing's uh, Tulsa 16 Oatmeal IPA, 6.2 percent, 70 IBUs, uh, and was brewed in honor of the USS Tulsa Naval Ship. So uh, we call it in the tap room USS Tulsa. USS so Tulsa. somebody will order a Tulsa. Oh, give them this. and I, I like to, we'll have to talk about the can art here in a second. Uh, Ray, you want to go next? I do. That was pretty good. That was a good one. And uh, Ray's drinking uh, Alpha Abstraction Double IPA by Wild Leap Brewing Company out of LaGrange, Georgia. And it's at 8% 44 IBUs. And that also has a pretty sweet can art. All it right. does. All right, so I'm going to have what I what I'm about to crack is the Native IPA by Lost Forty, and they're out of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. All right, y'all ready? Six point three percent. Ready for it? That Ooh. wasn't that great. <laughs> All right, well, I, I got third place. So, uh, the camera cheers. Oh yeah, cheers! Woo, man. All right, so uh, I guess uh, while y'all are taking sips, I'm going to remind everybody that uh, please check out these breweries that we're featuring. Check out the beers. You can find them on, you know, the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, their website. I like how I led off with Twitter, and that's really the one people kind of use the least. But you know, that's how I roll. <laughs> I know um, I don't. I don't get on there ever. Uh, um. So yeah, go check out the breweries that, you know, that, you know, we're talking about, you know, Ray's got wild leap and they're out of LaGrange, uh, Georgia, Sydney's drinking the USS Tulsa and they're out of, from Marshall out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then I've got the native IPA from Lost Forty out of Little Rock. So, uh, Sydney, do you want to go first and tell us about what's going on with your beer? Yeah. Um, I also want to preface with, I do work at Marshall Brewing Company as a beer tender on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and I just happened to buy the last six pack of this batch of the USS Tulsa. It's an oatmeal IPA. 
and we were about to run out of it. So I snagged myself a six pack, um, and was just really happy about it. Um, cause we currently don't have it on for another few weeks. Um, yeah, this beer is an oatmeal IPA and the oatmeal and the IPA definitely, well, the oatmeal and the beer makes it a lot smoother than, um, I would say that in your average beer, the oats are, since they're a little bit sweeter, they kind of cut down the hops and they make the beer a little smoother than an average IPA. Um, I just, I love this beer. This is one of my, one of my go-to IPAs for sure. It's, it's very smooth and, um, it's got three different hops in it, I believe. Uh, it's yeah, got a Citra Galaxy. So it's and a Galaxy. Yeah. And it's so- Nelson Sovins. Sovin. Yeah. Sovin. And I love Citra hops. Anything with a Citra hop, I'm all over it. <laughs> I know it's not very creative to love Citra hops, but I do. So. Oh, you love what you're you yummy. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like, I know. It, it's, it, it's all about your taste, bro. And it, just so you know, it's like we all have taste buds. I have a special relationship with mine, they're my taste bros. So if you hear me <laughs> refer to that, we'll talk about the, the flavor receptors on your tongue, I promise. But whatever your taste bros are into, like I'm a big fan of citra hops. Um, I love they, them. They're super juicy, right? They give you a lot of citrus notes. I think that's why it has the name that it has. Um, so it's like, who, who wouldn't like it? In my opinion, but I'm also a hop head. I'm an IPA guy. I don't know. I'm sad. Marshall's yeah, is Micah. coming out with a, with a new IPA that has cashmere hops in it. And I'm really excited for that one. Ooh. So that's going to be good. Are they going to get it? Yes, it's going to be distributed all over the state of Oklahoma. I can say it because they're releasing it um, by the time that this episode is going to air. It's called Slow Train IPA. Be on the looks for it because it's going to have Galaxy Hops, Citra Hops, and Cashmere Hops, and I believe one other. So I'm really Very excited nice. for it. Look out for it. <laughs> Um, I want to come back here in a second to the uh, USS Tulsa, but Ray, you want to tell us yes. a little bit about your beer? I do. So this is a, a first taste for me. Um, oh. I've not had this beer before, so I, I was drawn in by the can art. Now, I love a flat black can um, that just has a couple little things on it that really pop. And me living in Oklahoma, uh, buffalo or bison are a big thing. And this has a very colorful outline of a buffalo that, that caught my eye. And then I saw it's a double IPA that caught my other eye. I'm like, <laughs> I have to, I have to try this. And I'm so glad I did. Uh, my first drink, I was like, Oh hell yes, this is good. Uh, wild leap made a badass beer, but uh, this being a double IPA, I expected, you know, the, the, the IBUs be dialed down a bit. What I didn't expect was to have a beer that's not hazy be so juicy. Like this is like juicy. Um, and it makes sense to me. You look at the back of the can. It has some song lyrics on it, Mike. It says, I want them real thick and juicy. So find that juicy double by one Sir mix a lot. If anyone's ever heard of that guy. Who? <laughs> So, uh, I mean, this is the 15th edition of this beer, and I can see why they keep making it because, damn, y'all killing it in Georgia with these IPAs. You're making this me want to try that. <laughs> and that's the point, right? That's, that's, that's what we do. We uh, we introduce um, drinks to folks. We, 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 try, uh, we, we bring them beers you have to try before you die, and uh, we're going to put this on your craft beer bucket list. Yes. Boom. Did you find that local to you in Oklahoma? Uh, no. So I travel uh, regularly for my day job. And so everywhere I go, I buy uh, beer as much as I can fit in my suitcase and fly home with legally. And uh, I review those on the podcast, share with Mike, do whatever I have to do. Um, so awesome. I, I go and I go to breweries everywhere, go to, you know, Total Wine and More, uh, just whatever I can find locally that has craft beer. Mm-hmm. And uh, just find a big selection because there's a lot of stuff out there. They only distribute locally or regionally. Right. I wouldn't find them in Oklahoma otherwise. So it's like, well, take advantage of work and uh, bring home some beer. Yep. I was just in Florida. I got back last night and unfortunately I took a carry on. Um, so I didn't check any beer. Oh, but when I was there, yep. I had a whole bunch. So 
There you go. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know if I can ever say Florida again. It's always Florida. <laughs> I don't know. Just, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Whatever, Mike. So I'm drinking the uh, native IPA. <laughs> I'm drinking the native IPA by Lost 40. And this is a this is a pine ball. Like, it's very piney to me, um, which is cool. It's So it's got citrus. It's got to have some citra hops in it as well. It's got some strong citrus, um, but the hot, the pine comes through pretty strong for me. Um, it's it's very dry and crisp, so I, it's, you know I wouldn't consider it, you know juicy or you know fluffy or you know whatever. Um, I think it drinks pretty easy, but I like it. Uh, I'm not you know uh, IPAs are not my go to genre of beer style of beer but uh i think i've drank more ipa since we started this podcast than i ever thought i would but it's good um so the native ipa <clears throat> excuse me the native ipa is a collaboration with a local um apparel maker here in central arkansas and uh, they do a lot of stuff for adventuring uh whatever that may be for you um, they make a lot of different adventuring apparel so hiking, biking, skydiving, fly fishing, all the above. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Anyway, awesome. that's, that's what I've got. So I like collaborations. Those are fun. So, I, so yeah, yeah, you know, it can be. Uh, I want to go back to the USS Tulsa. Sydney, could you tell us about the can art and the naming of the beer? Yes. Um, the can art has a kind of color blocked in black and white very like almost a cartoony looking ship on it from the front and it is named after the uss tulsa ship um and i think that's pretty cool they brought that in because a lot of people don't know about that and bringing it into to the tulsa area um and it's it's pretty cool because at the bottom where they have the name they have like um it's blue and they have the ocean waves and then underneath it they have the tulsa 16 oatmeal ipa name for it. And I always think that sometimes when people are thinking about an oatmeal IPA, it might turn them off. But in all reality, I think it makes the beer better because it, it almost comes across as a hazy because it is so smooth and it does have those fruity notes that you're going to get with those citra hops. Um, so if you ever see an oatmeal IPA and it's advertised very largely on the can, don't get turned off by it. It's actually a good thing. And I'd recommend that everybody tried one. This is actually the only oatmeal IPA that I've ever had. I haven't found any other oatmeal beers or at least beers that advertise that they have oats in them. Um, but I would definitely recommend it. It makes the beer just a tad, I wouldn't say sweet, but the sweetness from the oats definitely do kind of counteract the bitterness that you're going to get in the hop. So it is, a, it is a very smooth, crisp, refreshing beer. Um, and I'm normally the type of person that's going to drink like a hazy IPA or an Imperial or a double, um, over just a single IPA because I do like the juiciness and the haziness. And, um, this IPA definitely, um, has the characteristics of a hazy for sure. Um, but it isn't quite as fruity maybe as a hazy would be. I remember, I think talking about oatmeal IPAs, I, I know, I think stone brewing made one. I'm not, okay. I haven't seen it around in a while by any means, but I know they had one at some point. But most of the time you see oatmeal in the stouts, you know, the oatmeal stouts. Stout. Yes, right. you will see them yeah. in the stouts. Mm -hmm. But, I but not in the white else. beers usually. Right. No, you're right. I was thinking there was somebody else that had an, uh, I can't think of it in it right now. I'll think of it when it doesn't matter. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in trying it. So I think it'd be fun. Um, Should be back on the shelves in a, in a couple of weeks, but unfortunately this particular beer is a tap room only. See, so they don't distribute it outside of the tap room, but if you come to Tulsa and come to the tap room, you can get this beer in six packs to go or in growlers or whatever you would like. Yeah. yeah I need to do that. So this is a beer for Marshall. I have not had. Okay. And, uh, so I've not, I've also not had an oatmeal IP, but if I've had plenty of oatmeal stouts but mm -hmm. I, I need to go so you've added a beer to my craft beer bucket list yeah so thank you for bringing this on where i've had a lot a lot of beers there's obviously there's way more that i haven't seen or haven't had even in my own backyard mm -hmm. uh, so i've, I've got to go get my grubbies on this and uh and pound a few 
It's, so, it's, it's poundable. It's, it is poundable. That's for sure. <laughs> and then I like the fact, it, it, you know, I was sad, you know, five years ago when this ship launched, it didn't, it's, it, pun fully intended here, it didn't make that big of a splash locally. <laughs> um, it, it was, I know, it was cheesy. Um, it was on the news a little bit, and there was a small gathering in, in downtown Tulsa for its launch. But it wasn't made into a big deal like I would have hoped that it was. Uh, so I'm glad that Marshall picked up on it. They're still carrying it on because how cool is it that we have an active naval vessel yes. doing its thing named after – it's not even the first ship. I think this is the second or third ship that's been named for uh, Tulsa. Tulsa. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But still, it was launched – uh, on March 16th of 2017, um, it's a really cool looking ship. If you Google it and look at photos of it, it looks very futuristic uh, and super cool. And it's like, man, that's uh, it's named after our city. I like it. Have you all uh, seen the USS Batfish? Yes. Yeah, down in Muskogee? No, I have it's not. A, uh, the USS Batfish is a retired uh, vessel outside of Muskogee, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. I, I drive through there relatively often. I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like an old summer. Was it a World War II submarine? Yeah. Yeah, we had those. It was a big deal. This made the news. We had the floods three years ago. It was actually lifted up off its little stands, and it moved. That was a scary time. Y yes, it was. Absolutely. That's when so I was working at that news station. <laughs> uh, right, right. So, Mike, uh, before we, we fall off on a tangent again, let's do a recap and uh, get our ratings and our song pairings. What do you think? No, sure. Um, so, real quick, uh, Sydney is drinking Marshall Brewing's USS Tulsa or the Tulsa 16 Oatmeal IPA at 6.2%. Um, she's she's preparing her rating at a 1 to 10. And thank you for hanging out and through she's that short commercial break. As we Welcome speak. back to see episode 100. Um, I know Rick. Rick, yeah. Rick, 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 Rick is drinking. Yeah. Oh so anyway, uh, uh, I'm just going to dive so right back Ray's in. Drinking the Alpha the Sydney, Abstraction. I got to know something. Abstraction Double IPA from Wild wow. so Brew. You are pushing company out of LaGrange, legendary status Georgia on Instagram right now. With, uh, with your beer Ray, you are also preparing your rating and your song pairing. And I don't want to overplay I'm going to be a rock star. Yeah, I'm going to talk about. Um, hey. I know you're super IPA chill about it, and I, and I appreciate you, you being so humble. But uh, tell us, how, um, how did you so get started is, with that? This is a piney uh, IPA. Well, um, very I also dry, work crisp, at another clean. brewery um, in the Tulsa uh, area called Broken Arrow Brewing malt. Company, and it was. But a I'm going to go ahead and Wednesday. start off. I'm going to give this beer an eight and out of ten. This guy comes in for what it's supposed to be. It is right on target. He was he was like, hey, you know, I want to get a flight. And the fact that it's they're collaborating with native apparel. Which is a, yeah, we have all these things. Uh, a wandering, give me all of it. adventuring set up type like a of nice company. Stage I'm going to pair it with a song called "On the Road Again" and, by like, Sir Willie Nelson. Stuff. And uh, took these because, pictures and asked uh, me a bunch of questions. And, and I was like, okay, okay so like, it's my you know, song choice. You want to? He started handing um, me the, the merch back. And so what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, said, "No, I'm going to go next." I have no use for that. I just wanted to take the pictures with it. Sounds good. Okay, why? So he told Sir? me he started right, so a beer blog. So I've got the world um, lead, His uh, beer blog. Brewco, um, he showed it to me, and I started following him. It's called Georgia, In Search of Beer. And he goes the around like the, he lives IPA. in Texas, Again, like the Midwest area. ABV, he travels a lot for work. And a really to dialed and down tries a bunch of beers IVs, and posts about it. From a double. And he was like, but yeah, because you know, again, I this was so juicy, and I didn't expect it. I'm going to give it a really high rating. I said, oh, that's pretty cool. It's not often I'm surprised anymore. Tell me more. Surprise me. I'm going to give this a nine out of ten. This is absolutely a beer. I would make a real beer for to get. So I maybe go to goes, Georgia yeah, before some, we get to 2023, Mike. Some, some free stuff, and we get some like more of these. I was like, and uh, my well, song—I don't know why this song popped in my head, goes, but like my yeah. second drink. All right, uh, I'm gonna start me the these. song of my own. So, um, oh my god, <laughs> my own worst so enemy. My I lit. Did. And Going back to my, my high school days stuff. a little bit so with that. So this was only a few months ago. My own worst, worst enemy. Early 2000s. Six months ago, not yes. that long ago. And I started posting stuff because I travel all the time. Lit. Um, L.I.T. Because I'm in, in flight school. L.I.T. To, to be a pilot. Is it like to drink? And my mom's actually a flight attendant. Um, no, like just so go lit. I do have like some <laughs> standby passes. So I'm just, so I, I'm just trying to spell it. I drink beer around the country when I'm traveling. I've never heard of this in my life. I'm going with. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to start a See, this is why we set you up, Sydney. Because Ray has terrible song so pairings and, and i decided really that come in and my hit a goal run. was for so a cindy what, how would you rate your beer, beer. Uh, tell us why and then and, let's hear a song um, you would pair with it very recently 
I this have had this beer before. It was the first Lee. time that I tried it. Moved but the first time that I did try it was recently. And, expanded. and, and they I were remember I just um, loved it. How smooth it is. Beer and with. surprisingly smooth. And because I have never had an oatmeal IPA before. They said Golden, and it's Colorado. Just, it's one of a kind for me until I found another one. And I love it. I think it's a really good beer. one of the lucky recipients of And I would give it an 8 out of 10. So for sure. That was my goal um, with how, for my beer vlog, and I've met it. And flavorful. So now I need to come up with another goal. So I need you guys to help sure. me. And I appreciate that. Because <laughs> I just met my goal. And my song so now I don't know what's is next. My Maria podcast. Brooks That's pretty Brooks cool. Brooks. I didn't expect that. That's so <laughs> Ray, this is my kind of person right here. So I did that too. So I chose it because as soon as I was thinking about this, we were talking about So the first time it happened, for at least for me, I was like, oh my gosh, I've made it. I'm somebody. Marie sent me beer to my house. Oh my gosh! Popped into my head. Um, (laughs) And where Mike and I, we never expected. Yeah. But when it happens, it's when she's around. And also, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you shoot for the moon. It's like just wait till your your 25th. Whether it's beer or or other things come up, like next time you like. Uh, so it think of what else we go to karaoke. This is what I'm going to write down. I want this next because I know you don't want to sing karaoke anymore or multiple things. I want to get. With Ten my Marie cases by Brooks of and Dunn, and I want to hear uh, you get those or, or just whatever, right? Just oh, always multiply it. Yeah. You're, you're a mom's um, You know how to. Yeah. to it's terrible, but there you go. <laughs> to, to game plan and set goals awesome, and whatnot, Mike. just apply those you got America, that, you know, practices uh, to what you're doing here. And, uh, you'd be surprised so. what we yes. come Yes. Like, I'm still surprised <laughs> at, at what Mike and I run into. Sydney, you don't know this, but uh, I'm an avid clown so, fan, sky's the limit. and I can sing a great song by yeah, Clown. it's pretty cool. And it's okay. also cool that well, such it was going to hit another high note for us. No, I'm going to do it in the break. Okay, I think everybody probably turn it off if they heard it. So we're going to ask some questions, but I think we should open our beers this, here real quick our and start drinking while we're talking. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's why we're here, so right? right? Probably right. the opposite. So, uh, right. Right. Sydney, I'd, I'd love for you to go first uh, again. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, before we go to break, uh, let's let's, uh, let's recap. Do it a little um, bit better this time. Make it a little bit more goodness. dramatic. Yeah. Who needs who needs enemies? If I could whistle, that effect would have been a lot better. Yeah, like like the like the good pop, Wally K. Yeah. It, it started right. really slow, but ramped yeah, up quickly, go. so not, not bad. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm so novice, we're going to recap so before we go to Sydney had the <sighs> Sydney had the Marshall Brewing, Tulsa, USS Ooh, that Tulsa, was good. the Oatmeal IPA. That was very good. She gave it an 8 out of 10. I like it. You can hear it with Sydney Dunn's My Maria, which is a great song. <laughs> Ray Deliberate. Uh, had a terrible right, so pairing, but mine. he had a great beer. One, two, three. He chose Wild Leap Brew Company's <laughs> Alpha Abstraction Double IPA at 8%. Not bad. And Rock actually, I don't know if it's a terrible pairing. I just give him a hard time. It's a song called uh, so for everybody uh, by uh, listening at home in their cars on their then, commutes, uh, wherever you had a uh, podcast. So I had the native IPA by Sydney Scotty. I paired it Daily Nelson on the road again. Give it an eight out of ten. The IPA, and, and we'll come back we will to that be here in a right second. back uh, after the Ray break. Drinking with three new beers, uh, hopefully three beers you have to try before of our future. After this, uh, and it's a 101 percent triple hazy IPA. It's a mouthful. Uh, and I've got the New Province Brewing Life is a Luxury Hazy IPA. So we've got all got the hazies going on. Hazy, hazy, hazy. All right, I think it's time when. Uh, Sydney, you want to tell us a little bit about holidays? So you mentioned holidays recently come in Oklahoma. They're from Golden. Ray, you've been yes. to Golden, haven't you? Golden is such a cute little been. town. Yep. I love it. So it's a good town. Yeah, tell us a little bit about uh holiday. Um, I can tell you guys a little bit about it. Um I really like this brewery. One, because it's woman owned. I think that that's just really cool. There's not a ton of women that own breweries in this country and it's definitely a male dominated industry. Um, and I think that it's really cool that, um, that this brewery is women owned and proudly women owned. Um, I also really think that this brewery is, is awesome because they are both gluten free and vegan, neither of which I am. I am vegetarian, but, um, I am not vegan. So do appreciate a good lactose in my beer every once in a while. Um, but yes, a hundred percent vegan, hundred percent gluten free. And they are very, very adamant that their entire establishment from start to finish remains gluten free. And I love that we can have gluten free beer. That's, that's open to people being able to drink open to the public. And that's good. It's awesome. Like to have this beer and you would never know 
that it was made any differently. And it's just, it's, it's delicious. So I think that this is a really cool brewery that's expanding south of Colorado. That's hopefully coming to a liquor store near you soon. So I think that that's cool. And I, I love to support, um, cool businesses like that. I really like the can art. Um, you know, got big bass Billy on there trying to go after a lure. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I really, I'm a, I'm a fan. So that's the big Henry Hazy IPA at 6.3%. Um, and so what they said on there is big Henry is the trophy fish that's always just out of reach. Uh, and I, I like that. Uh, and they're from Golden, Colorado. Have you? So, Sydney, yeah. have you been to Golden, Colorado? I have. I have. I've been there a few years ago. Um, I was with people that weren't very avid beer drinkers. And we ended up actually not going to any breweries, which is very sad. Because it was, if it was my choice, every single trip would solely be about breweries. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and I was not the one driving. So <laughs> we kind of poked around downtown, um, and then kind of we were just there for a couple hours. So. Yeah, it's a cute little town. I mean, I we went there because of the Coors plant or the Coors uh, tour and whatnot. But we uh, did that, and then they said it was like a five hour wait. So then we left. Oh yeah, we got there like <laughs> first thing in the morning. Yeah, we um, did it the right way. We were right. there at like two. So, uh, Ray, you awesome. want to tell us a little bit that? about your beer? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What? Oh, I was just asking. It was a cool. It was- it, you know, it was it was all right. It was it was very similar to the Budweiser one that a lot of people have done. Um, you mm-hmm. know, minus the Clydesdales. Um, you know, yeah. similar process. There's there's good history there, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not a, a a hater of big beer, but. Um, at the very end, you got to sample some beers and have some pretzels and hang out. Um, we okay, didn't do cool. too much of that because we were, you know, moving on to do other stuff. Because I think we were on our way to SS Park at that point. Okay. So we stopped in, did that, and then continued on SS Park and whatnot. But awesome. It was cool. I mean, it's definitely worth a shot, a stop. And then there's, you know, I don't remember Holla Daily being there when I was there. This is a few years ago, but. Okay. Um, definitely some other breweries that uh, were around at the time. Cause I think the last time I went to golden was probably like 2008 to 2010. Yeah, they've maybe. been around for about, I think six years. Yeah. So. Cool. Cool. Ray, uh, what about your beer, it, sir? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Adroit theory, if, if you're in Virginia, this is a, in, in the craft beer, they, these guys are very well known uh, and really for their IPAs. Uh, I think I got you an Oktoberfest um, towards the end of last year from from there, and I was super surprised to see that. Even uh, it was, it was a barrel aged Oktoberfest. That's you know what you're right. Yeah. Um, so, but their IPAs are next level, man. But I got uh, drawn into them initially uh, by their can art, and it's so just the can art is very heavy metal, and not like hair bands and guitars. But when you look at it, it's just like rawr, you know, it's like rah. Um, and it really spoke to me. Uh, and so I tried their beers. I visited the brewery and it's out in Percival, Virginia, which is about 35 minutes, uh, west of Dulles International Airport, Dulles, Virginia. So it's out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And it's a very small brewery. And when I visited, I was very surprised at the brewery based on the can art. Now, but you go there, two people are super friendly, uh, just a small little, you know, spot to sit down and chill. Their outdoor space is much larger uh, than inside, and it, even the outdoor space isn't that big. But the brewery was—it's cool, man. The, the, they have heavy metal music playing uh, when you go in. It's not—it's lo- not loud, so you can enjoy conversation and whatnot. But it's like, rawr. and just everything about them fits what you see on the can, and the beer even somehow ties into it. Uh, I'm drinking a, a 10.1 abv ipa so it's really cranked up i mean it's a triple now of course that drives the the bitterness way down and really makes a lane for the hazy to come in um and this is so citrus forward like insane citrus forward uh so in reading on this you see they use clementine oranges which are like the little cuties you go to the store and you buy the tiny oranges for your kiddos i mean that's a clementine so a little sweeter. Uh, it's got some sour notes from the grapefruit. Um, so you kind of have some clashing citrus here, which makes sense given the can art. Um, there's this, this armored up dude with like this pike on this big battle steed 
fighting some demon looking dude. And I really feel like demon looking dude is a great fruit. And this warriors of Clementine, this is where my imagination goes. Um, but it has this, I want to say odd, but it's got a bitterness on the backside. So it's a very complex beer. Um, definitely like, uh, was mentioned earlier, it's got a front, middle, and a back. It tells a story. Like when you take a photograph, you want to have some depth. You want to have your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. And you feel that with this beer. It's it's very detail-oriented. It's It's got a lot of body to it. And I, I don't – this is definitely not a gateway beer, Mike. Now, we talk about, you know, those beers to introduce somebody into the craft beer world with. This is not among them. All right. Um, this is for a seasoned beer drinker, uh, really to enjoy. Again, very complex, very enjoyable, and it's uh, it's badass, dude. I'm I'm digging this. Well, uh, y'all both have so my my beer is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got the hazy. I've got the life is a luxury. It's a hazy IPA from uh, New Province out of Rogers. And, uh, so, I mean, it, it's, it's good. It's got some citrus some pineapple. Uh, it, it does have, a, it says it on the, the can, but it has a little bit of vanilla flavoring about it as well. So it has that, a little bit of that, um, undertone, I guess you would say. Um, so it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It, it, it tastes good. Um, it's not, so I poured it in a glass it, and it's not as hazy as I thought it would be. Um, it, it's not clear. Uh, but you know, I just, when you think of hazy, you think of like what Sydney's got in her glass, right? Um, you, you, real cloudy. That's this, th- yeah, this this one's. You can't not tell as where the foam ends and where the beer stops in this this glass. Right. Uh, so, uh, but it, it tastes fine. It tastes really good. It's not as carbonated uh, as uh, a lot of them, which I actually like. It's a little bit dialed down, so I prefer that a little bit. Um, but I like it. So, and and that's the. Life is a luxury uh, by New Province, and New Province makes some good beers. I, I've had some other the beers from them, and I really like them. So they're doing some good stuff. Um, but this one, I, I think this one may not speak to me personally as much. I think that the other folks might, uh, in, the hop heads might enjoy this <laughs> uh, if they got a hold of it. For me, I think it's uh, I, this is not one I would go back to a lot, just because it's not speaking to me personally. That's fair. Yeah. I have to be, I have to be careful. Cause I, I, I it's, it tastes fine. No, but we all know you're not like an IPA lover. Like we, I know, like I've known for years, you're a stout guy. That's kind of like your thing or, uh, you know, some of the other lighter beers. I've seen you drink a lot of those in the last, you know, two decades. Uh, so <laughs> IPAs bless your heart. I mean, you, you drank so many of them on the podcast, Mike, and so many kudos to you. Cause I know that's not what your taste bros are after. Right. But I'm in the same boat. Like I avoided stouts for years after my first experience with the stout. Um, it was called the bare knuckle. And we've talked about this a few times. It was terrible. It just tasted like trash. I'm not going to say who made it. Um, but it was <laughs> Why a horrible not? Beer and I thought, oh, because I'm, I'm just not like that. Uh, okay, fine. We, we got it as, as a taster when you and I visited the, uh, Anheuser-Busch brewery there you go. in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, um, I'll just say it. And I didn't like it. I thought it was trash. I'm like, if this is what the stout is, I'm never drinking another stout. And I didn't for 15 years. Um, and I got introduced to him again with the podcast and I realized I have been missing out for 15 years. There's so many good stouts out there, um, but I just mostly stuck to IPAs. That was my jam. I've had so, so many IPAs, but through the podcast, I've been introduced to so many other styles um, and whatnot. And it's like, man, there's so much good stuff out there. We have to spread the word. And so we do, Mike. Right. But anyway, I'm, but all that I'm actually interested in that because I'm not a stout person at all. But I've had a couple that I'm decent on, but I'm not a coffee fan. And to me, the stouts always have that like roasty flavor that tastes like coffee. Oh, so I tend man. to avoid them, unfortunately. So uh, we will help you out. It's like I've got I a handful at the top of my head. I could get oh man, the only beer I've ever can, given a ten. I can I can do a white stout or like a blonde stout because it doesn't have that roastiness. Right. Like I've only given one beer a 10 out of 10 on the podcast and it was a stout out of Illinois and it tasted, it tasted like French toast, maple syrup and butter with like a scrambled egg finish. It was like breakfast in a can. It was the most amazing thing. 
You have maple and syrup it was, in it. You you've got my my New England heart. It's heart right in oh, there. Oh, and uh, I got to give a shout out to Beer Babe Jess because uh, she's the one that got me that beer. Um, and she's like a, a really big name on Instagram in the beer industry. So we love we love Jess. She's been on with us a couple of times. She's super cool, super cool individual. And I was like, wow, she she delivered a home state beer. And it was so, so good. I'll never, ever, I forget the name. I'm miserable at names, but it was so, so good. I will never, ever forget that beer. I have in my fridge, oh. I have a beer that, uh, a stout that was aged in maple syrup barrels in my possession. There is one on life. tap at Marshall Brewing Company right now. And it's very good. A stout? Called the Black Dolphin Stout. It's an imperial oh, yeah. stout. Oh, aged in that's a good beer. Materials. Yeah, I've heard yeah it I've is. Had, I actually, I've had a good number of those. So good. Yes, very good. I, I like that one more than others. I'll say that. There you go. Hey, that's a good. That's a good start. Don't don't discredit yourself. This happened about two weeks ago, so this is new. Very very new. So anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a stout some longer sky. Again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is so before we get to our ratings and our song pairings, what we'd like to do, Sydney, is do random questions. And so what we'll do is we'll ask you some random questions, just like it sounds, okay. and then you can turn toward us and and ask us random questions if you want as well. So it's it's but that's up to you. Cool. Um, I'll say if there's anything that you, you know you feel uncomfortable answering, you can tell us to go screw ourselves or whatnot. No, we won't. We won't go that far. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, it's up to you how much you divulge. But I've got your first random question. Are you ready for it? Ready. Hit me with it. What is your What was your favorite childhood cartoon or your adulthood cartoon? Oh. <laughs> I. I don't know. I, I never really watched much TV growing up in New England. We were kind of just always outside doing anything and everything and just taking stuff apart and putting it back together. Um, I mean, the main cartoon that I remember watching is Dora. And the reason that I liked it is because I wanted to learn Spanish. And I did. Like, I think that that was something that really always stood out to me is learning a multiple languages because my mom speaks German and um, I ended up actually taking French for eight years over Spanish, but it kind of, I think that kind of got me hooked on wanting to be trilingual. So I think that one probably stands out to me. Perfect. Perfect answer. There you go. Yeah. Ray, what about you? <laughs> Are you asking me to ask a question, Mike? Or, or answer it. It's up to you, dude. It's your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So I will ask a question of you. Uh, so I'm, I'm the foodie. Of the, obviously, Mike loves food, but I am in love with food. Okay. And uh, you mentioned you're a vegetarian. And, yes. and if I'm diving too deep here, stop me. But I'm curious if you dive into like the impossible meats uh, mm -hmm. or other varieties like that. Yeah, I'm a very avid cook. Um, I, I don't find myself going out to eat very often. I, I love, love making stuff from scratch, whether it's baking, cooking, you name it. I love to do it. Um, and I find myself I, like black bean burgers, any type of like veg, veggie foods. I love making tofu. I've gotten the tofu down to a science where I get it crispy on the outside and mm. crunchy with like chewy in the inside and it's actually really good and i've gotten it to the point where it actually has maybe like the consistency of chicken um or so wow. i've heard from the meat eaters because i haven't eaten meat in about 16 years so it's been a while um i was an ambitious child so i decided to not participate in the meat industry anymore but i That's yeah good. i know the impossible burgers are really good i'd recommend charleston's um for sure they have a good impossible burger but yeah, I love, I love trying new, new, new things. I'm always, always interested in, in sampling impossible, whatever there is to offer. Right Burger on, so King's impossible listen. Whopper is pretty good too. If y'all oh haven't tried God. it, you should try it. I, I have, uh, I'm in my forties now and fast food hits me different than it did 20 years ago. Um, yeah. so don't judge me if you must. I'm not offended, but I still get bacon added to my Impossible Whopper because I, I love my bacon. Mm -hmm. But 
it goes, it works out better for me at Burger King, at least getting impossible patties. I'll pay the extra dollar a patty, whatever. It still tastes amazing. Uh, but it's I got I have to plug a local business and you'll, I think you'll appreciate this. I believe it's in the Marshall family. Um, there's a new okay. sandwich shop in downtown Tulsa called the Dracula or called Dracula sandwich. Um, okay. I went in there with my wife a few weeks ago and she got this general. So chicken sandwich, but the chicken is um, it's not chicken meat. It's um, I think tofu or I forget what it was, but I ate it and I'm like, this is so effing good. Like you would, it has a great texture about it. It doesn't feel fake. It feels like a breaded piece of chicken. And it was just like, damn, y'all are killing it with this. So That's just awesome. a, a I've little, got to write that down. Another way we can, you know, talk about this, you know, off air, whatever. I'll, you know, give you some other feedback, whatever, but so free plug Dracula sandwich, downtown Tulsa, a uh, great spot. And they have some uh, vegetarian and vegan options on the menu. We love to hear that. Oh, ghost dragon express. I, I know where that is. Yeah. yeah it's cool. in the same, same little place, the same counter. Yes. You can order a, a really cool sandwich or some Chinese food. I love it. That's uh, awesome. I'll, I'll have to have to take a trip over there for sure. It's about five minutes from me. So, <laughs> right, right on. All right. So I got one more question before uh, b- before I'm done with my questions. I guess. Um, okay. If if they were going to make a movie about your life, and and maybe it's a drama, maybe it's a comedy, I don't know. Um, but if they're going to make a movie about your life, what actor is playing you? Who are you going to pick? That's so hard because I'm not a movie buff at all. Um, somebody came into the brewery and said that I looked like somebody the other day, but of course I forget who it was. Um, people have said that I look like Drew Barrymore and I don't see it at all. Um, I don't know. I think I, Drew Barrymore is cute. Yeah. I mean, I could go with that. I, I think yeah. that I've looked up pictures of her with bangs because that's like the closest idea of what she looks like or what I like we would look like the same, you know, that way. So maybe maybe I'd pick pick her just because somebody said that we looked alike before I cut all my hair off. So <laughs> maybe I'd go with that. I don't know. I'm, and she's yeah. also funny. So I think that would be kind of yeah. cool to have somebody that yeah. was like funny and cute and right. like actually a good you know, a good actor to play me, I guess that would be kind of cool. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, see, somebody had to tell me that I, I wouldn't know off the top of my head. I'm, I'm very much not a movie buff. Unfortunately, my interests more lie in football and, and beer and, and cars. And <laughs> so. All right. Ray, what about you? Who would play Ray Neal in a movie? Oh man. Uh, you know, Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> That's who oh, would man. play Big Ray. He is I, not. The, he's not the right side. The thing is, you have to find somebody like Vince Vaughn is the same height I am, but he is not built like me. And so you'd have to find somebody tall that's not skinny, and that's you don't see that in a lot of Hollywood movies. I think Ben Affleck's a fine choice. I don't. I, I like. I'm. A, I like Ben Affleck. I think he would do it as an actor. He would do a great job, but he doesn't have the build. Right. That's all I'm saying. He's a fine actor. I, Except in Daredevil. Sorry, Ben. Daredevil is a terrible movie. Not your fault, but bad movie. But I like him in a lot, a lot of other movies. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right, Rachel. Who's, who's playing you in a movie, Mike? Dude, I. So this is a, actually a question because I think about these all the time when I'm sitting on the toilet or whatnot. I don't know, but um, <laughs> uh, there's times I would think like. So I think the closest thing. So like. As far as like uh, body wise and stuff like that, like Jack Black's pretty close, right? <laughs> but I'm awesome. definitely not the out as outgoing and as free spirited as Jack Black is. Um, but that, uh, but in a movie, you kind of you make some you you know you, you make some artistic, creative decisions, right? So Jack like Mike Bradley could be a little bit more outgoing and fun, right? Who, who's That's the guy, true. Who's you know, Jack Black, he's played a couple. Go ahead. 
Oh, yeah. well, you know what? With, with that haircut, I kind of see it. So she's shown us <laughs> Drew Barrymore <laughs> look alike. I can see with it with bangs and a short haircut. Right, right. But you guys have very similar features in your eyes, though. I, I definitely in the eyes, I see it. Not so much in a lot of other features, but her haircut there matched. But y'all have similar eyes. Yeah. Is that is that wrong to say? Maybe. <laughs> it may be wrong. I think it. I know. I, I think I agree with you. Yeah. I used to, I I think Drew Barrymore is pretty cool. I'll have to think. Of, I'll think. I'll think about Sydney. I, I'll have to compare it. So, who's the guy, who's the guy that plays Doctor Brule or uh, on um, Talladega Nights uh, opposite Will Ferrell? What's his name? Ooh. Oh gosh, I can see his face. That's who I'd want to play me. That guy. I think he's so cool. Yeah, man. What? what John is his C. Name? Riley. John C. Riley. Yes. yes. John C. Riley. I think John C. Riley is the coolest. He's I'd funny too. Him. Right. I'd love for him to play me. So that's what I got. Be cool. Right. I'm also a big fan of Reese Witherspoon. She's a very, very empowering in the, in the women's rights community. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool too. She's another blonde. I mean, she started her own uh, directing. Um, she started like her own, um, like pretty much her own company because she was tired of, of women not being cast as, as lead characters. So she started like directing movies on her own. So I thought that was kind of cool. She, yeah. She's also <laughs> got like a personality that is um, like a tr- an attractive personality. I don't know how else to say that. Like, you know, it seems very she's like fun and bubbly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. But she's also just like, she's genuine. I like her. Yeah. So, all right. Go yeah. ahead, Ray. You're up next. All right. So this one, this is a really tough question. So I'm glad you're seated. Okay. What's your favorite number? 13. Oh, okay. Why, why the number 13? I really always liked that number because nobody else liked it. And so I always used it as like my sports Jersey number because everybody else was so scared of it. And I was like, come on, y'all, it's just a number. So then I would always pick it because it would be the Jersey that was left over at the end. Everybody picked their jerseys really quick. I would just run in at the end and grab what's left. And I always had number 13 and I just became my favorite number because I, I don't know. I just wore it when I was, I played like a million sports growing up as a kid. So I always ended up with that number on my back, and I thought it was lucky for some reason. <laughs> I like right number on. 13. Oh, that's no, that's awesome. fair. 13's a good number. It was my number. It's a very small. popular number um, amongst like the, the, the biker community. Uh, you see like a lot of ghost guys will wear a ring with the number 13. Really? Um, yeah. Like biker as in like motorcycle? Like motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. I had one yep. of those for a while. I sold it a couple months ago. Oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I've always, I've never ridden a motorcycle. Oh. I've always wanted to, just never have. Got to do it. Gotta, you only live once. Got to put that on your bucket list. No, it's it's there. So like I've got, a, I've got a friend that is one of the managers of a Harley dealership in town. I've gone in and looked at bikes and whatnot. Um, I like the idea of it. But it's I've never, it's never had the opportunity. I'm one out because again, I'm bringing my size up because I'm, I'm a refrigerator of a man, and I'm always scared the motorcycle won't hold me up. I know like a road king is definitely sizable enough. It's like a mm-hmm. 900 pound machine; it'll be fine. Yes. But still, I look at it and I'm like, that's no, it's not. Gonna and hold I had the right. opposite problem. I mean, I'm not tiny; I'm like five nine, but I dropped my bike one time on me backing out of the garage and I could not get it off me because I'm weak. So I was like, Oh no, oh, no. this nice t- tiny little bike that I can move around. <laughs> so I had the opposite issue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Five, nine. I remember five, nine. I think I was in sixth grade. Ha. No, I'm not making fun of you at all. I'm not, I'm just, I'm six, five. So I'm, I'm, I'm tall and, uh, I'm, my shoulders are wider than a Costco shopping cart. Like, I, I don't I even remember five football. nine. <laughs> what did you say? Poor Mike. I said I don't remember being five nine. I've, I've, ne- <laughs> I've never been five nine ever. Uh, I'm five seven on a good day. Wait, okay, wait, maybe wait, wait, you, you put some some cowboy boots on and you probably hit it. Right. Hit a yeah, little, I do little have five nine. Yeah. 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 
the old so. heels on. Uh, so, go, so Sydney, do you have any questions for us? I am curious how y'all met each other. Oh, uh, we've had this one before. Awesome. Ray, yep. you can go. So Ray, Ray's good at this. Yeah, yeah, actually it was in jail. Um <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Uh, so no, we were both uh, in still in high school, and we met at the Boys and Girls Club of Pryor, Oklahoma, or uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of Green Country. It was in Pryor. Uh, so for folks who don't know, it's about an hour outside of Tulsa, and uh, we both, you know, just just hanging out. They had a teen thing on Friday nights, and uh, we met there and started to to hang out to Boys and Girls Clubs and just kind of hit it off as friends, and we've been hanging out literally ever since. Um, so it started out very simple and, and, and who knew back then, right? Mike, uh, that that would have happened. And I still have a handful of friends otherwise that I, I stay in contact with, um, that I met at the same place. Um, so just brought a, a bunch of, I don't want to say randoms, but <laughs> I don't know that a lot of us hung out together or knew each other otherwise, but right. that's where it got started. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I like the gel story. We should come up with that. Like develop that. <laughs> we should totally make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should just to have for a fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's, it's funny that you're saying like, cause uh, I was, I was talking to my, my 13 year old the other day and you know, she's like, you know, cause friends are a big part of her life. And she was like, you know, who do you, who do you, who do you talk to? That's you were friends in junior high. I'm like, nobody. I'm like, I only talked to like a couple people, even from high school, you know, and, and one of them didn't even go to my high schools, you know? So, uh, it's, it's definitely different. Uh, but it, it, it is surprising to me every now and then that you and I, you know, stayed connected. Not, I mean, not, I'm not saying I'm surprised. Like, you know what I mean? It's a good surprise. I realized when I said it, it sounds yeah. like I'm so surprised. I still talk to you. So but what really I think was the foundation, Mike, the first time you and I ever went anywhere other than the Boys and Girls Club was to Pizza Hut. And that was at the at the time, it was the only place in prior to get hot wings. And we both had a thing for hot wings. And so I really think our, our friendship was built on a foundation of wings. Sorry, Sydney. Uh, no offense, honey. I, I know you're vegetarian, but Mike and I do. We, we, we do eat. We're meat eaters. No, I, I hey, hope we don't offend you with that. No, not even a little bit. No, you so, guys are good. Okay. Okay. As I try to be sensitive. It was like, I understand. Um, mm -mm. So, but um, yes. Um, so it so, really, uh, it went on for that. We used to pay extra even to get like drummies only. <laughs> I, I don't really, know if you remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, there also used to be a wing place in Claremore, Oklahoma. It was all you can eat wings on like Wednesday night. Wednesday nights. Yeah. Yeah. You guys would run them out of business. We would try. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we would. We would. Yeah, we yeah. would uh, hurt their their profit margins those nights. Um, yeah. You know the same the same place, my same wing stop. That's where my wife wanted to go for our wedding rehearsal dinner. If uh, if you remember right, you were there for that too. Yeah, same remember, yeah. same place. Yeah. So, oh yeah, so All classy. Right. We're <laughs> classy, classy folks. <laughs> um, so I, I want to ask Sydney a couple more questions, but first I want to get back to the beers. So we built, we've all kind beer. of uh, gotten our, our beers under wraps here. I'm going to, I'm going to go over them real quick and then we're going to give them a rating and pair them with a song. And then I've got a, I've got a, a couple of questions for Sydney to take us out with and close out the podcast. Um, so a quick reminder, Great. uh, Sydney had the Holiday Daily Brewing Big Henry Hazy IPA at six point three percent, and they're out of Golden, Colorado. Uh, Ray had the Adroit Theories, Chasing Visions of Our Future at ten point one percent, and they're from Percival, Virginia, and that's a triple hazy. And then me, myself, and I had the New Province Brewing Life is a Luxury Hazy IPA at seven one point one seven point one percent. Man, I'm getting my merds mixed up. Um, all good beers. All uh, uh, we're we're about to find out what the ratings are. I, Ray, I would like. So what I'd like to do is Ray go first. I'll go second, and we'll save the best for last. Okay. All right. So, I, mean, I had a lot of good things to say about this beer. Obviously, I'm I'm a fan, and this is a first try for me from them. 
I picked up uh, these cans from the brewery uh, my last visit in December of 2021. So I've been sitting on this for just a minute. But dude, love, love, love this beer. Uh, I'm going to give a second 9 out of 10 tonight, Mike. This is just a badass beer. And I'm going to pair it with a song called This Means War by Avenged Sevenfold. Sorry, I was having to type that out. Avenged Sevenfold, This Means War. Yes, sir. I'm giving 9 and 10. Okay. Um, I'm going to give my beer. I had the Life is Luxury, his IP. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And, uh, because the life is a luxury just made me think of that song by Tracy bird called lifestyles of the not so rich and famous. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. So I, that I was that so song. fun back in the day. Sydney, you know that song? Yep. All right. Well, Hey, it's a good day. We all know some, uh, some corny nineties country. Uh, I like some so, 90s country. Oh yeah. We, I love nineties country. Yeah. So anyway, seven out of ten. Tracy Bird lifestyles of not so rich and famous. And now it comes down to you, ma'am. Uh, tell us about uh, I, your rating and song. I actually just realized that I didn't spend any of my time earlier talking about the actual beer. I talked about the brewery instead. <laughs> the old time. Well, tell us about I the didn't beer. Talk about the beer. So um, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more now. When I poured this beer into the glass, because I'm one of those. Um, people that can't drink beer out of a can because I just have so many glasses. I just like to use them. I, when I poured it, I could not tell where the foam ended and where the beer started because this beer is absolutely so hazy. And I would even venture to say this is the haziest in color and in opaqueness beer that I have ever had. Um, it is a very light yellow hazy color. Um, it very, it comes across the tongue, very hazy, um, a lot of hazies that I have had before are, are thicker. Like they kind of, you almost like chew them. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're kind of thicker. This is a very watery, um, beer. It's not very thick at all. Um, and it is very hazy in, in color for sure. Like that's, that's what stands out the most for me out of everything. The flavor, um, I get a lot of citrus in the beer as well. Um, and I get a very tart back end to this beer. It's very, very pungent. And the taste stays with you for a long period of time to the point that it's, it's almost aggressive how the beer stays with you. Normally to me, hazies are very smooth beer. Um, right. they're kind of, they're very, they're very easy drinking. I think this beer is initially easy drinking and then you really bite those hops at the end. And, and that tastes like I, I haven't had a drink from it in about 30 seconds or so. And I can still very, very, very distinctly taste exactly what that beer tastes like. Um, which is something that for me is surprising because normally a hazy IPA doesn't do that. Um, and it almost leaves like a tingling taste in my mouth. Like it's very, very distinct. Um, and I almost, I don't know if I like that part or not. I like everything else about the beer. Um, but that like lingering tart aftertaste would probably give this beer around a, a six out of 10 for me, maybe, maybe a six and a half out of 10. is what I would give it. I love the flavor of it, but that like tingling kind of super tart aftertaste doesn't sit super well with my palate although everything else about the beer is really good including love the brewery but they do have a blonde that i really like i think even more than this even though i'm more of a an ipa drinker for sure so i'm gonna give this beer a six and a half out of ten um and the song that i pair it with is i'm gonna miss her by brad pace oh yeah that totally fits with the big picture of fish <laughs> in the can <laughs> gotta have it and most of what i listen to is 90s country so i'm just like thinking about loving loving to fish and this whole beer is, is, is the whole idea behind this beer is um you don't you don't think that you've landed a good beer but then don't let it get away so kind of cool man oh looky there she got a bite there we go. There's, there's, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. 
Gotta do it. Um, my favorite Bra- Brad Paisley song is Mud on the Tires. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one. So, um, so I know we're kind of getting close to our, our time here. We've, we've been on here a long time and uh, we surely appreciate uh, the company, Sydney. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on. Um, what I'd like to do is I'll, I'll do an overview of the beers real quick. And then, um, and I'll give you a second to think about this, but just think about some of your favorite beers you've had and just kind of give us a rundown of some of those, uh, you know, in no particular order, just say, you know, I've recently had this or that. Um, and I'll give you okay. a couple of seconds to think about that while I'm going through the beers here real quick. All righty. All sounds right. good. So, uh, for round one, uh, you know, we had three different beers. Sydney had the, uh, USS Tulsa, the Tulsa 16 oatmeal IPA from Marshall Brewing, uh, out of Tulsa. She gave it an eight out of 10 and paired it with uh, Brooks and Dunn's My Maria. Uh, great song. Ray had the Wild Leap Alpha Abstraction Double IPA. It's an 8% beer from Wild Leap out of LaGrange, Georgia. He gave it a 9 out of 10, and he paired it with a song called My Own Worst Enemy by the band Lit, uh, and that's spelled L-I-T, uh, for those of you that need spelling lessons like I do. Then uh, <laughs> I followed it with Native IPA by Lost 40 Brewing out of Little Rock, Arkansas at 6.3%. I gave that beer an A and paired it with Willie Nelson's On the Road Again. We took a short break. We came back and we had another beer because that's what we like to do. We like to drink uh, more than one and it's a lot of fun. So round two, uh, I had the Life is a Luxury Hazy IPA from New Province Brewing out of Rogers, Arkansas at 7.1%. I gave it a seven. I paired it with Tracy Bird's Lifestyles of the Not So Rich and Famous. It's a great song. Ray had the, uh, what'd you have, Ray? You had the uh, Chasing Visions of Our Future at 10.1% from Adroit Theory. Out of Percival, Virginia, you gave it a nine and paired it with This This Means War by Avenged Sevenfold. And I've heard of that band, so uh, you didn't you didn't uh, scare me away there. Oh, and good, then good. Uh, Sydney had the best song choice of the evening. Um, with so she drank the Holla Daily Big Henry Hazy IPA, six point three percent, hailing out of Golden, Colorado. This is almost like should be in like an announcer, like if you're in an MMA fight. Out of Golden, <laughs> Colorado. Uh, anyway, so uh, she she gave it a six and a half and pra- paired it with Brad Paisley's I'm Gonna Miss Her. Um, but the the biggest part of this all is these are all scores that land every beer tonight on our Craft Beer Bucket List. All these beers are now going to go on the list of beers you have to try before you die. Right, Ray? That is absolutely correct, sir. Yeah. So, Sydney, just tell us about some of your beers that you've really enjoyed uh, or something that you think we should check out or you want to give a shout out to. Yeah, I actually have three breweries that are my top three breweries of all time that I've ever been to. Um, and I know you might not appreciate it as much, but I'm a huge IPA person. So these breweries are for the hop heads. Um Brewery number one, coming out of St. Petersburg, Florida, Green Bench Brewing. Um, They are a very small brewery um, that makes one of my favorite beers called Skyway Hazy Double IPA. Um, They also have a Skyway IPA as well, um, named after the Skyway Bridge that connects St. Petersburg to um, Sarasota. And it is a great brewery. They have such a cool ambiance. They give industry discounts, which is always good. Um, And they're on a cute little strip in St. Petersburg that has a bunch of little um, small restaurants and bars and breweries. And they've just got a beautiful patio and just awesome beers. They always have four IPAs on at the time, at least. And so you can go in and get an IPA flight and just just indulge in the greatness. Um, I definitely would recommend checking them out if you're ever in the Tampa area for sure. Um, my other favorite brewery that I have been to is called Trace Latros Brewing. And, um, they are in Salida, Colorado, which is going to be about an hour from Gunnison, about an hour and a half from Crested Butte about three hours south of Denver. Um, it's absolutely just an incredible, incredible brewery. 
and I went there a couple months. It was in November. So I've been there. Um, I've only been there the one time and I had an IPA flight and I was just all over it. I gave their clean living, um, bubble milkshake IPA, a five out of five on untapped, which is not super common for me. Um, and I loved all of their beers. They had a, um, really great Imperial Oktoberfest, um, a couple of really good hazy IPAs on. It's just a tiny little brewery with a beautiful view of the mountains from their patio. So Trace Latros in Salida, Colorado. And then my third sounds brewery, awesome, by the way. third brewery, it is, oh my gosh, so good. And their beers were amazing. They have a little bit of everything there. Um, and this brewery might be a little bit more popular. Um, it's called Struggle Street Brewing Company in Beaumont, about an hour outside of Houston, Texas. Um, definitely recommend anybody that likes sours or IPAs to take a trip over there. It is worth it. Um, I had some amazing beers there. Um, and actually, and I'm not a very big um, sour person, but I had a beer, a Bellina Weisse sour called Struggleberry Tart, 11.2%. And it was absolutely wow. one of the best beers and definitely by far hands down the best sour that I have ever had and their bikini bottom, um, pineapple milkshake IPA got a five out of five as well. So they have some really good stuff down there. Some like super weird beers that you would never find anywhere else. Um, definitely on the craft beer bucket list for me, at least I want to go there again. Um, and actually have a regular that popped into broken air brewing company the other day, whose dad is from Beaumont and got me a shirt. So I'm excited to get that in. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. They found a broken air brewing company sticker in struggle street brewing company that I put there, um, before I even worked there and they saw it and they're like, Oh, that's so cool. And so they posted on Instagram and tagged broken air brewing company. And then I found out that like people found my sticker that are regulars. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> Goes around, comes around. Absolutely right. No, it's cool when that stuff works out like that. So it's, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Sorry, I had those ready for you guys, and I wasn't even prepared for the question. But there you go. <laughs> Three really amazing breweries must check out all over the country. Right. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to remind everybody to check out Sydney at Can't Stop Will Hop. Uh, and when this episode goes live, we'll have uh, some stuff that can link you to her profile, and you can go check out um, all her things that she's got going on, beer and otherwise. I mean, uh, she has a lot of fun, uh, and we appreciate Sydney coming on to our podcast and sharing time with us on because uh folks we record this on monday nights and we start about nine o'clock and it's already uh past 11 and uh you know because i'm an old man uh as we were saying earlier i'm a 70 year old man all my life um, <laughs> i really appreciate people staying up late and hanging out and uh taking their time so thank you so much um ray i'll let you take it from here and uh sydney when i'm in tulsa we're hanging out and having a beer Let's do it. Let's do it for sure. All right. So also I've got to echo that. Sydney, thank you so much for taking the time. I certainly appreciate you. I uh, appreciate the knowledge that you're bringing to the craft beer industry. <clears throat> so I, I do like to, to follow you on Instagram. You've got a lot of great posts and great stories and whatnot. And what's great is it looks like you're genuinely having fun while you're doing it. Yes. And that's awesome. I totally love that. So also I love you guys that listen to us on Apple those five-star ratings. I love it when you guys check out the breweries and visit their social medias. You can find links to every brewery that we mentioned tonight in our show notes. Be sure to give that a visit. While you're on the social medias, be sure to give us a five-star rating again on Apple. Drop us a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We're super easy to find. Also, if you're tuning in from iHeartRadio, thank you so much. And if you're listening to us on Facebook, uh, that's a totally a new thing. And we appreciate you guys tuning in from there. Obviously, I've had a few beers. I'm starting to stutter over easy words like appreciate. <laughs> but you know, hey, it's a thing. It happens. I'm at home in my home studio, so it's totally okay. I just have a commute to my bedroom in about 20 minutes to pass out. I think I'll be fine. And on that note, please, please, please don't drink and drive, but do drink local. And we will catch you all on another episode in the 100s of Craft 
beer bucket list. Adios. Crap Beer Bucket List is partially supported by Red Dirt LLC. Red Dirt is a parks, recreation, and tourism services agency with the goal to provide the tools, information, and leadership to help guide, plan, and market your organization or business. Red Dirt provides media management, photography and videography, research and analysis, and overall management for excursions and experiences for your agency. Visit reddirt.us.